It is time for questions to the Minister for Justice. We will start with 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Mr Ian Miller. Thank you very much, Sir Deputy Speaker. I would like to ask the Minister what input um, will the Department for Justice, Justice have in terms of reference and in investigation into child um, exploitation? Well, I thank Mr Milne for the question, although indeed I better not say too much. I might annoy one of his colleagues if I go too far into the territory, which is question one on the main list. Uh, but uh, the answer is that there were no specific uh, uh, actions required for the DOJ within the Bernardo's report of 2011. But since then, we have been working in, in partnership with DHS SPS and the Safeguarding Board, looking at our uh, varied um, roles in the protection of children. And I have had meetings with the Minister of Health and with others to look at how that occurs. And as members will know, an expert-led inquiry is being set up to see what the way forward is. Call Mr. Milne for supplementary. Um, I would like to thank the Minister there for his answer thus far. But could the, min could the Minister tell us you know, that, uh, exactly you know, what those discussions consist of you know, with the Minister for Health? And uh, would he not agree uh, that there is, at, the heart, at, the heart of at the heart of this all is an issue of justice, and therefore it is. Uh, uh, in my opinion, very necessary for the Justice Department there to be uh, heavily involved in it. Well, sorry, Deputy Speaker, I really am at a loss. My understanding was that uh, questions at this stage were not supposed to preempt questions which are on the list. Um, any, 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 any further answer would merely preempt an answer which is to a prepared question and is not particularly topical. I would remind the Minister it is entirely up to yourself whether to answer or not. I will happily answer in 15 minutes' time. I call Mr. Mitchell McLaughlin. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker. And could I ask the Minister just to comment on his uh, ongoing relationships with the POA? Um, I have not had any direct contact with the POA in recent weeks. I have certainly had engagement with the POA over different aspects of the reform programme. Uh, senior officers of the prison service continue in those discussions, and I am keen to see that we manage the, the reform process in conjunction with all our staff, whether they are members of POA, PGA, NIPSA, or none of them. Call Mr. McLaughlin for a supplementary. Good last again, callers. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his answer. Uh, can the Minister give an assurance to the House that uh, his change agenda and reform agenda will not be deflected despite uh, difficulties or resistance from within the, the institutions? Well, I can certainly give Mr McLaughlin that assurance. As I said, answering questions a few minutes ago, uh, we have seen uh, a short-term withdrawal of goodwill by the POA recently, uh, which has ended in, you know, in the last few weeks, and which I hope is a sign that good progress will continue to be made but I am absolutely committed to ensuring that the reform programme is driven through uh, against all the operational difficulties. And I'm not just saying that that applies to staff. I'm saying the practical realities of the end-to-end -end reform are quite a challenge. Call Mr Trevor Clark. Uh, thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Can I ask the Minister, will his department support the POA in relation to making a presentation to the pay review body? Well, my understanding is quite simple, Deputy Speaker, that the, uh, the pay review body will seek the evidence that they wish. They've had a detailed uh, evidence presentation from my department, and they will clearly have to engage with staff, including the POA, as they review the work that they have to do, looking at the matter which I referred to them. Call Mr Clark for a supplementary. Using the Minister's words in terms of the evidence, given that the evidence is clear in terms of the threat to all prison officers, um, will the Minister then support an environmental allowance to be paid to all officers who are currently working for the prison service? Well, Deputy Speaker, I appreciate Mr Clark's point, but the reality is that for many existing staff, the previous environmental allowance was consolidated into normal pay scales. The issue which is a particular concern is of new members of staff who may feel that they are being paid less proportionally by comparison uh, with their colleagues who ha have received that consolidated award and in comparison to what happens in England, Wales and in Scotland. Because it is not appropriate to make a direct comparison, as is frequently done, although not by Mr Clark today, with the issues it applies to police officers, 
where police officers across the UK are paid on the same scale and there is an additional allowance in Northern Ireland. In Northern Ireland, we have completely different pay scales and the issue is in ensuring that they bear an appropriate relationship to the pay scales for England or Wales or for Scotland. Mr Alex Maskey is not in his place. I move on to Mr Jerry Kelly. Uh, Did the Minister agree with me at the, the uh, recent uh, opening up of the um, recruitment process for the PSNI? is to be welcomed and also that it uh, allows for a further transformation and civilianisation of the police service, which, as the Minister will know, is not yet fully representative of the society we live in. Well, as the Member will know from his role on the policing board, uh, there are issues around the numbers and there are issues around the budget. I welcome the fact that the police service is now in the position to start a new recruitment campaign for the first time in some years. I think the important issue for this recruitment campaign given that the specific artificial 50-50 targets are removed, is to get the best possible affirmative action programme which is being carried through by the police service to ensure they get the widest possible range of applicants and continue the work that they've been doing in recent years to ensure that they become a representative service. Yeah. Call Mr Kelly for a supplementary. Uh, thank you, the Minister, for the, the answer so far. I mean, the, the, the department, his department is uh, responsible for uh, the business case for uh, recruitment. Would the Minister agree? that it's lamentable that the criminal justice inspector described uh, what we have uh, as large-scale reverse civilianisation, um, not as Pat and it in the PSNI, where civilian posts are being repopulated uh, or being uh, populated by retired police. And would he agree that this recruitment campaign provides an excellent opportunity to put that right, bearing in mind that the recruitment is not just the 100 that we're talking about now, but is now going to go through uh, perhaps up to 400? Well, I think the difficult issue of exactly which uh, functions are best carried out by warranted officers and which by civilians and what the background of those civilians may be is not one which is for my direct involvement. I need to be very careful to leave the policing board with its responsibilities in such matters. I would remind members of the House to discourage this reading questions and move on to Dr Alistair MacDonald. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Could I, could I uh, ask the Minister that in the light of the continued flag protests in Belfast, particularly around the city centre, would the Minister of Justice agree with me that such protests might, it would be in the interest of all concerned, if such protests were suspended during the Haas process? Well, Deputy Speaker, I, I appreciate the question. I'm not quite sure how far I have a ministerial responsibility for it, but certainly in terms of the responsibility to ensure a more normal society better opportunities for business, especially in Belfast City Centre, and the chance to benefit from the five-party talks which Dr Haas is leading, then I certainly believe it would be beneficial if any protests, whether they are around Donegal Square or Twiddell Avenue, were suspended immediately to allow this society to move on and to find a different way of dealing with the community problems of the past. Call Dr Macdonald for a supplementary. Well, I, I very much thank the Minister, particularly if it's slightly off-centre off in terms of his responsibility, but nevertheless, we uh, see him as having a major role there. But would he agree with me that, that uh, such protests are a big threat, as they were last year, to trade in Belfast City Centre in the run-up to Christmas, and we all of us have a collective responsibility to do all that we can to, to reduce that threat to the retail trade? Well, yes, Deputy Speaker, I certainly agree with Dr Macdonald on that point. I had a recent meeting with business representatives from the city centre, and it is absolutely clear that there has been a major difficulty with business in Belfast city centre in recent months, way beyond the effects of the economic recession generally, as is applied in other parts of Northern Ireland. I believe that if there are further problems in the run-up to Christmas this year, it will be devastating for many businesses in Belfast city centre, and also, I suppose, particularly many services uh, it's possible that somebody may go back to a shop the next week if they're deterred from going to one week. They don't go back to the restaurant or the pub the next week. And it's clear that that has been very damaging. That's why I believe we collectively have a responsibility to urge people to call off such protests and to ensure that we conduct our processes in this place or through the Haas talks. Call Ms Bronwyn McGann for questions. would the Minister of Justice comment on the recent public disclosure that the British Ministry of Defence is unlawfully holding more than 66,000 files in a privately owned warehouse in Sw Swaddling Coach, South Derbyshire, many of which came from the British Army headquarters in the north of Ireland, which was closed four years ago. 
I think, Deputy Speaker, that what is being done by a UK department in England is far beyond the responsibility of the DOJ in Northern Ireland. The member has the right to ask a supplementary. Gurami Ogut, would the Minister agree that the fact that this was never disclosed to the PSNI's historical inquiry team and was never discovered by that team is cause for further concern about the lack of rigour and effectiveness by the HGT when it came to reviewing British Army killings? And would he agree to write to the, the, the British Ministry of Defence to ensure that those files are secured and not destroyed? Well, I think, Deputy Speaker, the key issue around that is around the operational work done by the historical inquiries team and whether there were specific requests for information which were not forthcoming, uh, what relationship may be between the HET or the PSNI and the Ministry of Defence, I am not cited on, and therefore I am not showing in any position to give a specific comment there. Mr Michael McJimpsey is not in his place. I call Mr Joe Byrne. I call Mr. Joe Byrne. Mr. Deputy Speaker, can I ask the Minister, is he content with the procedures that are being currently put in place for the new recruitment process for new PSNI officers? Well, done, Joe. well, again, whilst I can appreciate Mr. Byrne wishes to ask the question, that is a matter for the PSNI and for the Policing Board and not for the Department of Justice. Uh, but I have no reason to believe that the procedures are not proper. Call Mr. Byrne for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I appreciate the Minister has a limited role and function in this regard, but given that he is the Minister for Justice, is it appropriate that he would be blindsided if there were any misdemeanours in relation to the recruitment process? Well, again, uh, Deputy Speaker, the key role there rests with the Policing Board, not with the Department of Justice. But if there are specific concerns that Mr Byrne or any other member wishes to raise, I would happily have them raised. But I need to be careful that I don't interfere in the responsibility of other members of this House who are on the board. Call Mr Robin Newton. Uh, thank you, Mr uh, Deputy Speaker. I wonder would the Minister agree with me that it is absolutely necessary that the PSNI, in the cases of child abuse, actually interview and carry out an extensive interview until they believe that they have got to the full truth, regardless of the position that anyone might hold in society? Well, yes, Deputy Speaker, I believe that the police have a duty to carry out their investigations as thoroughly as they need to in accordance with the legal advice that they are given on particular cases. Would the Minister agree with me that there is a, a significant amount of concern around the uh, case uh, which involved the leader of uh, Sinn Féin and a perception within the wider community that indeed uh, the interviews may not have been as rigorous as one might have expected? Well, Deputy Speaker, I'm not sure I'm a barometer from what perceptions in wider society may be which appears to be the request for Mr Newton. Um, all, I, all I know is that I have no reason to believe that the police and the PPS did not carry out their duties properly in the case to which Mr Newton refers, as I understand they do as a general rule in other cases. That concludes topical questions to the Minister for Justice. We'll move on.